Hi, I'm Emily Caggiano and this is another episode of Dissecting with Emily. So today for you we have the left maxilla of the T-Rex holotype specimen that we obtained on loan from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Um, we also have a full cast of the skull of another T-Rex from the American Museum of Natural History um, known as Bug. And so today uh, we wanted to show you some mysteries that we um, have stumbled upon um, upon looking on this maxilla. And so the first thing I wanted to show you is how well the bone quality is. Everything on here is beautifully preserved um, and so that enables us to see all the features really well and to be able to closely study the mysteries that we have found. And so there's three that we wanted to point out today. Um, the first one being this really long groove that kind of runs top to bottom of the maxilla right here. Um, there's also these really large kind of leaf-like impressions that run along the side. And finally there are these um, four points that kind of are in a circular position on the top of the maxilla. And so the first feature we wanted to show you is this long gouge that kind of runs right here. Um, it's got ridges on the side and again it's kind of bumpy in the middle. Um, and we think this might have actually occurred post-mortem and this is because the bumpiness that you see is actually the bone structure uh, which means that there was no wound healing that occurred and so there was no time for this wound to heal over um, once it did happen which probably means that the animal was already dead when it did occur um, and we think this could be caused by scavenging of another animal feeding on the flesh of the T-Rex or it could even have been caused by it being excavated um, from the ground 115 years ago. And so the second mystery we wanted to show you are kind of these leaf-like impressions. Um, they're actually pretty substantial. You can see them kind of move my fingers even if I just drag them along the side. Um, we have uh, the first hypothesis that we kind of thought for this was pathologies. You can kind of see that there's these discrete ridges right here um, with the impression in between. You can see that there's one, two, possibly three, four, five, and even six present on the maxilla. And so uh, we thought that they may have been pathologies caused by face biting, which is a behavior that is common to T-Rex. Um, you can kind of see, again, the discrete ridges. Um, this one even has kind of this cool spider pattern in between the two. Um, and so we kind of wanted to test this hypothesis of it being a pathology by comparing it to another specimen. And so when we looked at the New York specimen, you can actually see that it has these um, kind of dents as well. You've got one here, uh, two, three, four, possibly even five. And so when you think about pathologies, um, you'd think they'd be more random and not quite as uniform in between two uh, completely different specimens. And so we think that because the skin interacts so intimately with the bone right here, that it was probably something to do with the skin, um, whether it be some kind of scales um, with different colors, whether it be some kind of display pattern is something that we would um, kind of want to figure out as another possible hypothesis that we have for this. Um, and finally, with the third feature we have are these um, kind of four bumps. You have one here, two, three, and four. And we first, again, thought these were pathologies as well, but you can see that they're kind of in this circular pattern. And so, again, we wanted to test this hypothesis and see if it is actually a pathology or it could be something else. And so, when you look, again, at the New York specimen, you can see that it does have these um, bumps as well. You've got one, two, three, possibly even four. Um, it's not quite as well preserved, but it still is evidence that these are probably not pathologies and they are something to do with the skin, um, whether it be scaling or um, some kind of display thing. And so we kind of wanted to further that testing by looking at other specimens. You can see down here, it's a pretty large maxilla of a T-Rex. Um, it doesn't have the leaf-like impressions, nor does it have these little bumps up here. Um, everything is pretty flat. And then again, looking at this juvenile T-Rex named Jane back here, she does not have these um, indentations, nor does she have the bumps either. And so because we don't think they're pathologies, and they most likely are um, this kind of skin display thing, um, we think that it could have three possible causes. It could be individual, so between individual T-Rexes and the differences between them. Um, it could be age-related, so because the juvenile doesn't have them, but these older T-Rex do, it could be something that happens when the individual reaches sexual maturity. And finally, it could um, be sexually related. So between um, the, the males and the females, um, one or the other possibly having these um, skin displays for some reason. And so with that, um, these are some mysteries that we kind of wanted to show you and that we plan on kind of digging into more and see if we can unravel them some more. And so with that, I'm Emily Caggiano and that's all for today.